our Solicitor General, and my friend, Elena Kagan. From the beginning, Kagan was the front runner. As the first woman dean of Harvard Law School and first woman solicitor general, she is considered an intellectual heavyweight. Through most of my professional life, I've had the simple joy of teaching, of trying to communicate to students why I so love the law. Growing up on New York's Upper West Side, she got her love of the law from her father, an attorney, and her love of learning from her school teacher mother. If this day has just a touch of sadness in it for me, it is because my parents aren't here to share it. In high school, Kagan was a leader, serving as student council president. She left no doubt about her wishes to become a judge. She was friendly to everybody, said hello to everybody, did not ever use her intellect to push anybody down. She would use it instead to lift everybody up. She went on to three of the most elite academic institutions, Princeton, Oxford, Harvard Law School, where she was an editor of the Law Review. She clerked on the Supreme Court for liberal giant Thurgood Marshall. She has called him her hero. He called her shorty. The nothing but the truth, so help you God. In her Senate confirmation hearings last year for Solicitor General, where she represents the United States in front of the Supreme Court, Republicans grilled her about legal memos she wrote for Marshall. Her responses reflect her confidence and quick wit. I was a 27-year-old uh, pipsqueak, and I was working for an 80-year-old giant in the law. If confirmed, she will be the only sitting justice who had not served first as a judge. But some of the court's greats, William Rehnquist, Earl Warren, and Louis Brandeis, also lacked judicial experience. The president said he tapped Kagan for her keen intellect, her leadership skills, and her ability to build consensus. Her interests reflect her openness. She loves softball and poker. Obama first met Kagan when they were both professors at the University of Chicago Law School. As dean at Harvard, she won approval from conservatives by hiring bright young scholars like Jack Goldsmith a top official in the Bush administration. It, it caused a bit of a, a controversy among some quarters, but uh, Elena thought it was the right thing to do, and she's very firm. She's someone who's very committed to principle. Her career has put her solidly on the left. She worked as a lawyer in the Clinton White House, but she will have significant conservative support among academics and lawyers. Michael McConnell was a leading conservative judge. Most uh lawyers of a uh, conservative bent as well as you know moderates or liberals will be will see this as an outstanding appointment that support alarms some liberals who worry she is weak on issues of executive power and the war on terror and hasn't been forceful enough in her positions on the court she lost her biggest case in front of the Supreme Court. That was when she was defending campaign finance laws. And it was that decision that President Obama used to take a swipe at the conservative-dominated court in his State of the Union address. And Katie, you're going to hear a lot about that case in the weeks and months to come. Meanwhile, Jan, I know you were a student of Elena Kagan's when she was a professor at the University of Chicago Law School. So was she tough? <laughs> she was very tough. I had her for two classes, but she was very challenging while at the same time very engaging and lively. She pressed us very hard, but she would listen and then she would challenge. And we saw some of those same qualities when she's arguing before the Supreme Court. The justices seem to like that back and forth with her as well. And I think we're going to see some of those same qualities when she is confirmed, if she's confirmed as a justice. I think that's one of the reasons the White House selected her. All right. Katie. Jan Crawford at the Supreme Court for us tonight. Jan, thank you.